सॉल्व वन प्रॉब्लम ऑन फ्री टॉर्शनल वाइब्रेशन्स ऑफ गियर्ड सिस्टीम विथ निग्लेक्टिंग इनर्शिया ऑफ गियर्स Let us understand some important formulae related to free torsional vibrations of a geared system neglecting inertia of gears. When we neglect the inertia of gears, it is treated as two rotor system. So, if we observe the diagram, the motion is transmitted through the pinion gear system from rotor A to the rotor C. Now there is the shaft which connects the rotor A and pinion with diameter D1 and there is the second shaft which connects this gear and rotor C with diameter D2. Now we will consider for the first shaft length is L1 and for the second shaft length is L2. Now if we observe the first shaft there is the angular velocity omega p. Now why the suffix p is used because it is connected to pinion and then torque is tp and theta p is the angular displacement. Now if we observe the second shaft the angular velocity is given omega g because this shaft is connected to gear and torque is tg and angular displacement is theta g. This is the actual system and now we have to draw the equivalent system. We have to assume some equivalent diameter that is the uniform diameter. We will take d equivalent is equal to d1. Now if we observe, observe the actual system there are two parts of the shaft and how to calculate the equivalent length here. So equivalent length is equal to LQ1 plus LQ2. Now this LQ1 is related to first part. So how to find out LQ1? So LQ1 is equal to L1 into D equivalent by D1 raised to 4. Now D equivalent is nothing but D1. So L1, D1 by D1 raised to 4 which is equal to L1. So for this equivalent system, for the first part we will take equivalent length as a L1. Now we know that the motion is transmitted through this pinion and gear system to the rotor C. So here for this rotor C in equivalent system mass moment of inertia is I dash C and in the actual system it is I C. Now we have to find out the relation in between this I C and I dash C and what is the gear ratio. So gear ratio we have to find out from this angular velocity that is omega P by omega G and it is also angular displacement which is equal to ratio of theta p by theta g. Now I dash c is equal to I c omega g by omega p bracket square. But we know that omega p by omega g is g r that is gear ratio. So we can write the formula I dash c is equal to I c by g r square. Now how to find out this length L3. So it is related to the second part. So for this so we can say L3 that is LQ2 how to calculate this. So we will calculate this by using L2 into gear ratio square multiplied by D1 by D2 raised to 4. So this is the formula to calculate L3. Given question an electric motor running at 1500 rpm drives a pump through gearing. Pump runs at 500 rpm. The motor armature has MI of 400 kg meter square and the pump impeller has MI of 1400 kg meter square. The pump shaft is having 90 mm diameter and 450 mm length. Whereas the motor shaft is 180 mm long and 45 mm in diameter. Determine first the equivalent system having a uniform shaft diameter of 45 mm and running at 1500 rpm. Second, the natural frequency of the system neglecting inertia of gears. Take G is equal to 84 into 10 raised to 9 Newton per meter square. Let us understand given data with the help of diagram. As the motion is transmitted from electric motor to the pump, we will consider electric motor as rotor A and pump as a rotor C. 
motor runs at 1500 rpm that is na is equal to 1500 rpm and the pump runs at 500 rpm that is nc is equal to 500 rpm then the mass moment of inertia for this motor is given 400 kilogram meter square that is ia 400 kilogram meter square and ic that is the moment of inertia for the pump 1400 kilogram meter square now the motor shaft is given length 0 0.18 meter and diameter 0 0.045 meter. For the pump shaft length that is L2 0 0.45 meter and diameter D2 0 0.09 meter. Now the inertia of gears is neglected. So we have to consider this system as a two rotor system for equivalent diagram. So we have to show here IA for this rotor A and I dash C for the rotor C. Now D equivalent that is the uniform diameter D equivalent we will assume here as a D1. Then for equivalent length there are two parts because for the shaft there are two parts that is LQ1 and LQ2. So LQ1 is nothing but L1 and LQ2 is L3. So we have to find out this L1 and L3. So we will first find out the gear ratio. So gear ratio is the ratio of Na by Nc. That is 1500 by 500 which is equal to 3. Now how to find out mass moment of inertia for this C dash. Because this is for the equivalent system, we have to consider here the order as a C dash. So I dash C is equal to IC divided by GR square. So 1400 divided by gear ratio 3 square which is equal to 155.55 kilogram meter square. Now again we will calculate equivalent length that is LQ1 plus LQ2 that is L1 plus L3. So for L1 we know that L1 into D equivalent by D1 raised to 4. So D equivalent is D1 itself. So this D1, D1 getting cancelled and either it will remain only L1. And for LQ2 it is L3 and for L3 we have to write formula L2 D equivalent by D2 raised to 4 GR square. Now D equivalent is nothing but D1. So we will put the value. So L2 is 0 0.45, D1 is 0 0.045, D2 is 0 0.09 raised to 4 and GR, gear ratio is 3 square. So when we solve this, because L1 is 0 0.18, when we put here, we will get equivalent length 0 0.4331 meter. Now we will find out the position of node in equivalent system. So for this equivalent system we will consider point N as a node position and if we join the amplitudes for the rotor A and for this rotor C dash. So because these two are rotating in opposite direction we have to show amplitude in opposite direction and we have to join these two end points of the amplitude through the point N. Then the distance of this node position that is node point where the amplitude of vibration is 0. So the distance from rotor A is known as LA and distance of this node point from the rotor C dash is known as LC. So how to find out this LA and LC? So we have one relation that is from this equivalent diagram if we observe IA into LA is equal to I dash C into LC. So IA and I dash C values are known. So we will find out here the one relation. So 400 LA is equal to 155.55 LC. So LA is equal to 0 0.38 LC. So this will be our equation number 1. Now if we observe the diagram, so this is the node position for the equivalent system. So this LA plus LC is equal to L equivalent, that is the total equivalent length. So how to find out this total equivalent length, that is L1 plus L3 and we have calculated. So we have second relation, LA plus LC is equal to L equivalent. Now instead of LA, if we put 0 0.38 LC, then we will get the value of LC. So LC is equal to 0 0.3118 meters and LA is equal to 0 0.1212 meters. 
Now we will calculate the natural frequency of the system. So we have formula 1 by 2 pi under root of g j equivalent by i a l a which is equal to 1 by 2 pi under root of g j equivalent of i dash c l c. So because we have to take the relation for the i a and l a and i dash c and l c from this equivalent system. Now what is this j equivalent that is the polar moment of inertia for this equivalent system. And it's a formula is pi by 32 d equivalent raised to 4. So here d equivalent is equal to d1 and which is equal to 0 0.045. So we have to calculate z equivalent is equal to pi by 32 0 0.045 raised to 4. Now when we put the value, so g is the modulus of rigidity for the shaft material and it is mentioned in the question 84 into 10 raised to 9. Z equivalent we have to put this and divide it by i a l a. Now instead of i a l a we can also put i dash c and l c. So here 400 into 0 0.1212. So when we solve this, we will get natural frequency 4.20 hertz.